Hello everybody, Celine here. I hope you are doing well. I am just looking for you on Facebook. Actually, I'm looking for myself so that I can share this video into the creative group. I have a creative group on Facebook. Ooh, got a little hair out of there. Um, that I post a lot of things. So that's like a great place to be. Or of course, my email list is the number one way to get in touch with me. So if you're not on the email list, um, you can get there through the Facebook group. Um, I have uh, online workshops scheduled for tomorrow, but hang on, let's let's um, share this over so that everybody can find. Hey, Vicki, good to see you, my girl. Oh, geez, I think I shared it to the wrong place. Oh, all right, hang on. Share more options, share to a group. I wanna share it to the creative community. So now I have one more step. Oops, I gotta go delete it off my wall. I don't wanna accidentally, um, you know, I try not to do business on my wall. Um, here we go. Let me see, dun, dun, dun. Did it not go? Oh, God only knows. So God only knows where I shared it. I'm not seeing it on my wall either. Okay, well, <laughs> welcome everybody. Hi, Carol. Technology can be really strange. I met a new friend yesterday. Um, she got in touch with me. She was looking to place an order. We chatted yesterday afternoon. I tried to friend her. Facebook's like, you don't know this person. You can't friend them. Uh, this morning, she was able to friend me, so that was good. Hey, Jill. I'm so happy to see you. Um, I'm not sure of Kim's um, level of stamping, but I also have a friend, a new friend. Her name is Janice, and I met her in line at Walmart. Uh, we were kibitzing back and forth. It was a long line, and we were joking and giggling. And by the time we got to the front, I sent her an invite to our creative group and now she's coming to retreat. Here's the thing. She's never done paper crafts at all. So she's like, Celine, I have nothing. Where do I start? And I was like, well, you need a trimmer and you need paper snips. Um, but before all of that even starts, I like to do, oh, the front door is open. Maybe my husband will shut it. Hey, honey. Can you shut the front door? That sounds so funny. <laughs> Doesn't everybody say that on my video? Shut the front door. Okay, so um, I have a pack of thick basic white here, but I've done this with uh, friends on um, who've never stamped before for years. In fact, I have a girlfriend, Lori, that when she goes to make a card, every time she goes to make a card, she still pulls out her Ziploc bag. So we're gonna make our um, template. If you have a paper trimmer close at hand um, and you wanna make your own template, go ahead and grab a paper trimmer, if you have one, and play along. If you don't have one and you order one, you can always come back to this video and watch and play along and then you'll have your own handy dandy card guide. So we're going to make one. Um, so all of that being said, uh, it's a busy week. I have a house full of people coming tonight for a club. Um, I have out of our 56 members, 36 of them it happens to be, oh, here, let me throw some stuff in the trash. Half of the, uh, 36 of 56 are getting their host rewards this month. This is my, these are my new bags. Aren't they cute? They get butterflies. They're all different colors. And um, they're getting uh, their host rewards. I, I've chosen this. I change them out like every six months or so. These pearls were voted the prettiest thing in the catalog at my last in-person retreat. And so I chose it to be a club reward and then um, a pack of paper. So I figure we'll do the, um, we'll do the 101 and then we'll make some cards based on our templates. Okay. Um, that being said, this Saturday is Stamp Out Breast Cancer. Uh, we have been doing this for 14 years. I partner with demonstrators 
all over the country. Um, everybody does a little bit and it makes a huge difference. I was just looking a few minutes ago and it looks like we're up over a thousand dollars just from yesterday. So it was, oh, you know, I'll just go look. It's cause I'm not looking at the video for some reason. I'll just go see what it is. Um, it is, ah, we're at 9,681. So up about a thousand dollars since yesterday, which is crazy. Awesome. God's work first, you know, um, it would be nice if someday we lived in a world that didn't have cancer and um i'm committed i love when um i see that total go up and we can help people who are battling that disease so here let me uh ha, i muted myself now i can see your comments over here when i flip the camera so i'm gonna dive right in today and because i have a house full of people coming at five o'clock and tomorrow, um, oh, there's one more thing I forgot to tell you. Thank you. Um, yesterday, I reached my 800,000 in career sales. And it's such a big deal to me. Uh, that's a lot of glue. Um, it's just overwhelming to think that I've sold $800,000 in product myself in my, uh, I'll be 18 in March. But thank you, because it's all due to you guys. Tomorrow, I am going to be doing a live class, a Facebook class, in my private um, Facebook online workshop group for free. And then I'm going to repost the video wherever I can. So I'll repost it, hopefully, here on my business page in Creating with Celine. I'll email it out. I'll put it on uh, YouTube. And then there will be an ordering special that will go until next Monday um, for you to get a card kit in the mail for some really cute fun folds and gift card holders. So that is coming tomorrow. And I um, only really had a short window of time that I could make it all happen if I was gonna add something to my week because we have the fundraiser, we have club, and I'm working tomorrow night, my other job, I work as, as a karaoke host. So. Um, with all of that being said, tomorrow at 11 a.m. there will be a free online workshop. And if you can't make it, there's a replay and you have an entire week to place your order um, until Monday of the following week. Well, I think it's a week, five days, seven, six days, I don't know. But you get the idea. So let's flip the camera. We'll jump right in and we're going to talk to the new people for a little bit. And maybe if you've been around for a while, this is refresher. But um, if you know somebody that's brand new to stamping, you'll know what to tell them and you'll be able to help them make their baggie, okay? So let's flip the camera and we'll go from there. So this is for uh, my two new friends, Kim and Janice. Let's see what the table looks like when I pull my hand off. Okay, we're doing okay. So this is my photo studio. I have a little clip that sits in my studio on a wooden thing that I built. Nothing overly fancy, so hopefully you can see okay. If you have questions, please just shout them out um, in your comments and I will let you know if I have an answer. And if I don't, I'll find out. Okay, so first of all, the paper trimmer. When it comes in the mail, it comes with a plastic thing on it and you wanna peel the plastic thing off because these blades can get caught up if there's any little funky plastic things hanging out um, near the guide. In fact, if anything gets in the guide at all, I will go in with a little mini brush and clean it out. Um, nothing crazy, like just, just even a can of air would work, but no fuzzies in the trimmer. When you put this down, the first thing that I consider is this is a fence because it's up a little, it's a raised platform, I call it the fence. This is a fence, because it's a stopper, right? It's raised. And then up here, this is a fence, okay? So when you hear me talk about the fence, this is what we're talking about. This fence is designed for card makers. So if you put your paper in and you go all the way to the fence, that's the six inch marker, okay? So it, it's hard there. Um, what's cool about the Stampin' Up! paper cutter is five and a half is shown up here on the ruler and people often get jammed up because they're like, well, where's the five and a half? Well, 
this line that goes the entire length of the arm that you can pull out to make this into a uh, 17 inch cutter is the five and a half mark. So um, why is that important? Well, when you make a card, the first thing you do is you score a piece of paper in half. Well, half of 11, if you go the long way, is five and a half, okay? So it feels like I'm not scoring in my score. That's weird, hang on. This one, is it? Oh, that's better. I had it in my purse, so maybe it was, uh, I had it in a backpack this weekend at the craft fair. Then I'm gonna take my paper and flip it and cut it in half at four and a quarter. This is just a basic how to make cards. And it's with this trimmer, I can tell you, the old one you used to have to really dig this one is a glide, and you'll have better luck with your blades. You won't need them as often. But now I have a score mark down the middle, and I can press this off. Now my friend Cheryl would say that I should have a bone folder on the table so that I can make my crease nice and solid. But I always, you can see how it's kind of flap in there. Um, but I always score and then cut. So I'm always making two. Um, why make one card when you can make two card pieces? So let's do the math on this one. I'm gonna leave one for when we make a card. And then I'm gonna take one and use this as my first template. So this is four and a quarter by 11, all the way down. And that score mark is five and a half, okay? So that's the first way you can make a card. The other way, um, there's another, the same measurement, you just go the other way. So you score at the four and a quarter mark. And I'll say on this paper trimmer, I know you can see the bottom, I was at the top fence. Not only do you have 16th of an inch, but here, let me come a little closer. Okay. So between the three and the four, there are 16 lines. For each line, that's 1 16th. So 1 16th, 2 16th. 2 16th equals 1 8th. That's really confusing, right? If you don't do math all the time. But these up here, these are all quarter inch markers. So there are four quarters between three and four. And then it breaks down from there. So half of a quarter is an eighth. And half of an eighth is a 16th. Okay, so um, we could do that again at some point. But that's the base of it. But I'm going to take our card math again and just do four and a quarter. And I know that it's a quarter all the way up and down when I am on this line, okay? And then this time I'm gonna flip and cut at the five and a half, which has that big long line on my pullout ruler. Um, so that's one of the reasons I think that this paper trimmer is awesome for card makers because it makes it very easy. You don't have to pull out the arm to make a card. It's a little bit wider than some of the ones I've seen on the market that stop about here. Um, and it makes it so much easier when you're making cards not to have to fiddle with the arm every time. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Carol. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Kim. Yay, I love you guys. Okay. So we did, I'm just going to review. We did that one, which was 11 by four and a quarter, and we scored it at five and a half, right? This one is eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter. So these numbers repeat for the base and now I have the second template for my card packet, right? So these are commonly used, this is the, we'll call it the portrait and we'll call this one landscape because it goes the long way, right? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put those in my bag of tricks here. Now, the next level down that I use quite frequently, and you know, maybe I should get a different, a couple different pieces of paper because I wanna show you the differences in color as we layer them up. So let me grab, I like to make card bases and if I have extras, I have a little stash, so I can just pull out of my card base stash and we can cut them up. 
So let's grab a pink one next, or this one is, um, oh, petal pink, but it's really like peach. It's like my skin color, right? Or I look a little cold right now, so I look a little purple. <laughs> what else is new? So for lay, we're going to call this layer one, or actually let's call it layer two because it, or it's not the base layer. Um, but we're going to go and I'm going to flip my trimmer so you guys can see the actual measurement because we're going to go smaller. This one is five and a quarter by four. So the five and a quarter is here and I just trimmed this down. So we're going to, we're going to call this, um, how about if we call it a, that's good. Cause, um, a is going to have an A1 or an A2. Let, let me see if I can explain why. Well, I'll, I'll, let's just make them first. A2 is going to be a little bit smaller. So this one is, uh, let's write it down, four inch by five and a quarter. That is a four, I swear. <laughs> All right, and then uh, this one is three and seven eighths. She's like, oh my God, Celine, you weren't kidding. Holy measurements, Batman. So that's two lines before the four on the 16th inch side. So if we're talking, you know, not a quarter, but an eighth, it's seven eighths. It's two lines before the four. So three and seven eighths. And then I want... Um, five and an eighth. So um, that's five and then two lines over that I'm just gonna cut right there, okay? So these are the A layer and I would say when you're making a card, you have your base layer, right? And then you can do this layer, which is exactly a quarter inch smaller or you can do this layer, which is a little bit smaller, okay? So the next layer, let's change color. We're gonna call it B. Oh, let's use this bright green, why not? Oh, look, it was scored wrong. I love when I put stuff away that's wrong and I can reuse it and purpose it. All right. So this one I'm gonna cut down a little bit smaller again. So when you're layering, you can layer down either in eighths, sixteenths, or quarters. I usually keep it to quarters or eighths because if this is an eighth inch and I put something on it that's five by three and three quarter, you'll get like just a little border, a sixteenth of an inch border beyond that you may not see it if it gets too small so um we're gonna go five on this one because this is um the b level five by three and three quarter and a lot of times this one would be white because you either stamp on it or emboss it or do something fun with the uh die cutter or whatever, but so now this is where it gets fun because you have your base layer, right? Which we did both ways and it doesn't matter right now which way this one goes. But uh, this one goes down a quarter inch, five and a quarter by four. Oh, I didn't write on this one. This one is five by three and three quarter. I wanted you to be able to still see that I wrote on it, but see all the measurements. We're gonna call this B. Wow, mark it with a B like we're baking, okay? So the difference between this A1 and A2 is this one has a different border on it. So let me see if I can grab some cards off my rack to show you the difference. So, Oh, here, it might help if I line them up right, but there's only a 16th of an inch of this one going all the way around, whereas on the five and a quarter by four, you get a bigger area of color. It depends on your taste, right? So examples of that might look 
like this. So this would be our card base, option A1. And then I layered some three by fours on top, okay? This one would be option A2 with a thinner border and then laid on top. But because the cherry cobbler on this card is such a stark contrast, it makes it uh, pop way more against the white. Do you guys agree? I know there's a delay, so I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wait for an answer there. <laughs> okay, so next one I wanna show you that I use a lot, um, and this is just basic. And so from there, right, if you have a designer paper, you can run it across. So you would cut your paper three and three quarter by one. But these are just the, the the bare bones for my pocket. So you would pick this or this and then layer on this, all optional, right? So um, let's go back to this color. Why not? And um, I'm gonna cut this one a little bit different again. I use this measurement a lot. It's four and a quarter. by three and a quarter. So to give you an idea, if I were cutting this out of a full size sheet of paper, I would cut it down the middle at four and a quarter. And then I would cut three and a quarter inch slices and I would actually be able to get six from one sheet of paper. Okay, so let's call this B2, four and a quarter by three and a quarter. Okay, hope I haven't lost anybody. If you guys have questions, buzz me. So um, next, we did this before. If we're going down by a quarter inch, what should the measurement be? Well, we'll just take a quarter inch off and we'll cut the white layer to four by three. So I'm gonna bring this over to my four inch marker. And look, I have that quarter inch line going all the way up the side of this paper trimmer. I love that. Keeps it super easy for me to know that I'm nice and straight the whole ride. And then I'm gonna cut it down to three. So this will layer up nicely. From there, I use this measurement a lot as well. Let me see. There's two ways you can go with this. Let me show you another card. So from here on this one, I trimmed my designer paper two and a half by four. So the, it sat on top of my white, the length of the card, right? Pretty easy, my designer paper that matches. And by the way, Stampin' Up! is set up to coordinate. So this color is the same color as this color. And this pink ribbon is the exact same color as my paper. So rather than going through the aisle at the craft store, big box store, trying to find the right color ribbon, well, lo and behold, we have it. And they come in 10 yard bolts. This one actually comes in a package of three. So it might be five yards, but you get three different colors and they look like a baby blanket between the yellow the pink and the blue. Anyway, I digress. The other, so so we said this was four by three. I wanna make sure I mark my cards, right? So four by three is here, and I showed you four by two and a half. This one is two and three quarter inch square. So you can, I did it this way here, but you could turn it this way, and if the present wasn't there, you could stamp a sentiment here and still have plenty of room to decorate. So um, that's the basic 101, what everybody should know for basic measurements with card making. And um, then I was asked, Janice asked me, oh my gosh, what do I buy 
before I come to this retreat, I'm going to be so lost. And I'm like, no, you're not. Um, I would recommend having your own trimmer. And uh, these are 25 bucks. They're not expensive. I can um, put a small uh, supply list up in the comments of this video when we're done if it makes it easier for you but it might not happen tonight because I have people coming at five um which means I'll have to shove everything in the closet and clean up for them because <laughs> it's all the same space where I where I do this and where I have my class anyway um here's some other basic things this is a um stamp and seal plus this is how I stick my layers together and I certainly don't want to stick these layers together so I'll show you that in a second I like having liquid glue. I use the dot method when I'm sticking something down. So for example, if I was gonna stick this piece, I would, cause it's such a little tiny thing. Oh, look, mine's plugged. I keep Visine. <laughs> I keep um, a push pin in my little toolbox here. My daughter made these. Um, so cool, they fit all the Stampin' Up! tools. Uh, she's at school right now, so uh, the print shop's kind of closed, but we do what we can. So you see the amount of glue that I used there? We use this to put boxes together, um, tiny little dots, and it actually might be more dimensional than I should have done, but all you do is stick it down and hold it. Now, because it's a liquid, it does spread. So if you use too much, it'll be all over your hands and you won't like it, but it's the stuff that I use to put boxes together and it holds really, really well. These are glue dots, and um, they used to come on the outside of the roll, and then you would stick the item to it and lift. Lately, they've been coming kind of backwards. They're on the back side, so I fold them back, stick the item to it that I want, so I'm not touching it with my hands. So I just, I use it the same exact way, but now I fold these back. Oh, uh, Jill is asking to see the organizer. Jill just bought four of these. Alexis will be busy. Um, she, When she comes home, she tries to process them, but it takes 24 hours to print one. Actually, I'll do one better, Jill. Give me one minute and I'll come back to that. Um, so in here, I also keep a Wink of Stella. And if you know me, you know that I put this stuff on everything. I realize you guys are new, but you should get one. I have about four <laughs> opened right now. Um, yeah, I use them all the time. Dimensionals are big. She's coming to retreat, and I do have plastic six-inch rulers for a dollar um, in my little store because everybody should have one in their box. And, um, yeah, pens and Sharpies and oh my. But that this is like... The real bare bones come into class. Most of my friends who are coming to class bring their own little toolkit and they have this basic item. Oh, and there's one other thing, snips. Um, these come with a sheath, um, a little protector for your hand and you don't wanna put these in your purse without using the sheath. Ask me how I know. Um, we'll come back to that, Kim. I'm gonna get there. So. Let's make a card, because I talked a long time, but it's all brand new stuff, and if you've never done card making before, you should know some of the basics, um, and that was it. So now I've got my little plastic baggie, and I can go back to this as a reference tool when I want to make a project. Not that that stuff's not ingrained in my head. Maybe I need to send this to Kim for her order. Okay, moving right along. I have two card bases that I didn't put in the bag and I can put that back in. Ooh, and lip balm. I'm always running dry, so I like having lip balm in my toolkit. I know you can't see the lip color, but whatever. It's there and that's what's important. Okay. So this is what my, I've, I've had a stamp club online now for an entire year. So every six months I send them a little gift and this is their six month gift. Oh, I guess I should show the bag, but they're, they're all different. So you might not get this one. You might get the blue one or whatever. 
Um, and they got a package of the in color pearls and a package of the in color um, specialty paper. This is two items, actually all three of these come from the main catalog. And I fell in love with them. So I decided that that was gonna be part of their gift this month. Okay, so I got my, I should have, you're right. I, as Cheryl would say that I should have a bone folder on that list. Um, a bone folder is just, here, hang on. Wow, this, you can tell this one's been loved, used, and abused. Um, but this one, it doesn't have any ink on it. It looks like it does. When you score and cut a piece of cardstock, you can run this over and it won't make, make any marks in your cardstock, but it will get your cardstock so that it's not closing like that. It'll flatten it out without destroying it. And you just make sure that the point is not pointing at the cardstock and you can flatten stuff out that you, so if you're making a box and you want a nice clean crease, um, that's the way to go. All right, so what have we learned? We learned that we like, um, I'm gonna pull out some ink colors actually to match these in color papers and we can make a card or two. And then I really have to go because uh, I'll have to clean my room before everybody gets here. These are the colors that are in the pearls that they're getting and in the designer paper. So I start, when I started today, I drag in those colors. Kim was asking me about our ink pads and if when you have an ink pad, how the ink is stored. Great question. First of all, for every ink pad, they have a refill. So um, your investment is protected. You don't have to buy, you know, ink pads at the dollar store that might dry up and not be able to get the same color of ink again. These are set up to match out of the gate. And to open it, um, you open it like a compact. And then when it opens all the way, you slide it in. Now, when they're brand new, they're a little hard because the plastic isn't broken in yet and they're just, they're tough. Um, on the bottom, see this strip here? This is a sticker. And those stickers come on the bottom and I peel them off and put them on wherever I need them. You can put uh, a foreign language on the inside if you want. The newer ones have two in English. Um, but I've been, some of them I mark both sides, but if they give me extra stickers, I just think that you can't have too many reminders not to stamp in the wrong color. <laughs> when this is open and on my table, I can see that it is right beside the red. And now if I want the orchid over the sweet sorbet, I won't be stamping in the wrong color if they're both open because I have the sticker there. Um, Kim, did I answer your question about the ink pad? Yes, indeed. When they're stored, they're stored upside down so the ink will roll to the top while it's in storage and then it's nice and wet at the top when I'm there to ink my stamp up. Let me grab um, a sheet of that paper because I don't see one of my card bases. I don't know if you can tell, but I went right for the Orchid Oasis. It is my favorite in this um, in this kit. But we have one of our card bases already cut, and we're gonna say this was eight and a half by five and a half. Scored at four and a quarter. We did that earlier. So let's decide. I'd normally let you decide, but I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna call this um, three and seven eighths. By five and an eighth. So we're going with option A2. And you can do all quarter inch layers. It's just, I, I get bored easy and I like this. It, one of the layers is bigger. Um, and then you get a nice thin border. So there's my option A2. Okay, and that matches over here, you notice. And then here is, let's see what this is cut to. 
I want, oh, good. I want a three and three quarter. It looks like there's a like a bit of a black line on this paper. So I'll have to use the other side, but I'm gonna go down to um, B and cut this five by three and three quarter. So I did three and three quarter already. This is the five inch. Okay. Coming together, huh? We have something that looks like it's gonna match our stuff here. Okay. So Kim asked, what is Winkastella? I think that I should take one of these guys and put it on a block. I'm looking at this one. This one really caught my eye. So let's see if I can find, that's the guy right there. This looks like a two step stamp. So some of these wings will fit in. Um, it looks like this one fits in there. It's interesting. Ooh. I pulled it back and then it, it went back and I didn't notice. But I'm gonna take this off the block. I mean, off the stamp sheet and I'm gonna stick it to a block. And I'm gonna grab that, what I said was poking me in the eye, the Orchid Oasis. And I'm gonna stamp it full strength right there. And I really do think that these, it looks like a um, watermelon slice, doesn't it? I think that that slice fits here. Now, by the way, this is the first time I'm working with this set, but I thought it was so pretty. And I wanted to play with it so that if my club members came in, that they would have a sample with it. I want to see what it looks like. Stamp. So when you stamp for the first time, and um, first of all, I look through the ink pad and watch it light up. Let's see if I can get this close so you can see it. So I am just watching this light up and I'm not pushing any further than that. I've seen these blocks be completely covered in ink. I just got ink on my finger here. Yay. But um, just barely touch. And you only need this, this part of the stamp to have the ink on it. And then I want to see what it looks like stamped. And then stamped off. And then stamped off again. See, that's exactly what I thought. I don't think I want to go full strength on my project. So I'm going to go the next level down. So I'll stamp off on a scrap paper, my watermelon slice. I, don't you see watermelon there? I'm gonna have to do that. It's a different Facebook Live, but here we go. So now I've got it, um, I took the darker part of the ink off and it's this color that's on top of my image. Super cool, right? All right, so should I use, and you guys can tell me while I'm opening the package, would you prefer to see this in the same color again when I put the um, textured specialty paper on here? It's real sparkly and pretty. Or do you want me to use the darker color? So option A is to keep it the same color and option B is to go with the darker starry sky color that matches. So while you guys do that, I'm gonna open this package. Just let me know A or B. Stick to the, stick to the light stuff or go darker for contrast. So there's the two, A or B. Kim is saying B. Come on guys, if you're listening. Ooh, so I just found this over in my ribbon bin. This goes nicely. Um, Stunning, actually. All right, so mostly B is in one A. So I'm gonna go with the B and I'll go a little bit darker, but it's still a very nice coordinating color. So um, this might be like level C, right? Because it's gonna be a little bit smaller. What did I do with the white paper? Oh, <laughs> there it is. This one is three and three quarter by five, okay? So I wanna put a little bit of designer paper down here to kind of fill my gap. I, this one doesn't have a sentiment and I'm okay with that. Sometimes you just need cards that have an image and not um, 
So if this is three and three quarter, I'm gonna go three and a half. And then I'm gonna flip it and cut it at three. I can always make it smaller. This one is three, exactly two. Um, let's go two and a half so we can look at, well, let's see what we got first. So this is three and a half by three. And it is a little tall. See, I thought it might be. I'm gonna try um, three and a half by two and a half. Cause I don't need to fill that whole space, you know? It's even still a bit tall. I don't know if I love it. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna change gears. I don't care for that. <laughs> Isn't that the way? I'm actually gonna cut a half inch strip. So I'm gonna go back to my trimmer here. Make sure that you can see my measurement. This has a one on both sides. So I'm gonna use the backward side to cut a half inch strip. And I'm not gonna measure at all. This is just half inch coming off the, this is where I go rogue, sorry kids. But I'm gonna take this and potentially, oh yeah. I'm gonna go this way. Now I need adhesive, thank goodness for my handy little tool holder. I Everything sits in that thing. I swear, I, I think every week, my, the only thing that gets put away regularly um, that doesn't end up in my tool holder is scissors. I usually have to get up and get them. This week I headed it off at the pass though. So I'm gonna trim this off. So I just flip my paper over to see where that line is rather than messing with it, especially since it's at a funky angle. And let me see if I can use that other piece again. Yeah, maybe not, but let's see. Well, it's kind of interesting. I like that it stops. Or I could do this and have it, oh, let's do that. Cause it, it's, it'll frame it nice. And maybe I should grab a sentiment I do have the sentiments I'm gonna use for class tonight, so maybe, oh, that totally looks crooked. Let me go again. I want it to be the same angle. That's better. All right, so we'll do that. Kind of different, huh? I wonder if, I could like have that hanging off somehow. I'm not ready to cut it yet. I don't know. It. I will cut it, but I just, I'm not ready yet. All right, let me grab another stamp set. We, uh, we're using this stamp set for club. And I already have it on a block, so there's that. And how about this? You know, I don't know if it's going to fit. So how about, oh, I'm going to need my adhesive remover if I do that. Okay. So proud of you. Just for you. I, just for you. This stamp set is beautiful. It has so many different things. Um, it has happy birthday if we went this way. Grateful for what you have. So this is the set that we used in my um all the people in my club, we can use the same set or we can swap it out and use what we have. Let me see if I can just use this thankful. There are so many people that I'm thankful for this week. Maybe I'll go this way. Ha! Huh. Then it will definitely fit. Now I'm really taking my chances. Only on the fly, right? Hey, it's not upside down. All right, let's do that. So then I can put this back. That's cool. Something different. I like it. And interesting. Okay, so then I should have flipped it over. I'm cutting into the white a little. See, so that, that's a that's a good tip for you. Make sure you flip it over when you're trimming, otherwise you'll do what I just did. But we can fix it, maybe. Let's uh, take a little smidge off. You know, 
It doesn't have to be perfect. Here we go. Now at least there won't be any fun. Uh, and if I'm gonna take a smidge off one side, I'll take a smidge off the other. All right, I think we're good to go now. But that's it, like, it can be really simple and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so we did do stamping inside with the other image in there, but uh, there's also Wink Estella. Wink Estella is a water-based glitter medium. Um, doesn't end up all over things. It doesn't fleck off and end up on, you know, the floor. I was joking with somebody earlier that, that it ended up in the floorboards of my studio when we were redoing the room. What it does, especially when it's wet, is it is it moves nice. So it's not moving really good because I let it dry too long. But what you can do if it does dry is you can grab a piece of plastic. Look, it looks like I was doing that earlier, huh? Add a little ink to it. Pick up the color and paint with it. So here, I don't wanna to go too crazy until I see what the level of ink is and then I can pull down until I run out of that color. So now I'm just watercoloring with it. And when I go back into my palette, I'm not gonna go right into the center. I'm just gonna get a little bit at a time because I'll run out quickly on my brush, which is awesome. And I can just keep going. So this is the way you can use either stamps, pads, or if you have the classic markers, the stamp and write markers, you can use those as well, like a water-based medium, scribble on a piece of plastic, anything, pick up and go to town painting. So we answered that question. Okay, and I'm gonna scrape off just a little because it seems real dark right there. And I'm gonna just do the bottom and then <laughs> the inside of the watermelon slice. <laughs> it's funny. All right, so with that, I'm gonna put this in the trash because you know it's gonna end up on my hand if we don't. I'm gonna take this and show you a little closer. Let me see if I can, I'm, I'm gonna wait until I get it back in the playback because I want you to see the wink. It's not showing that way, let's see. Ooh, any? It's so super sparkly in person and then um, the camera just doesn't pick it up. But, and then you can go over the whole thing in clear and it makes it, even shinier. This kind of matches. And I was thinking I wanted to go that way or that way. But you know what? Let's just make a bow. Loop, swoop, and pull just like that. And nobody makes a good bow out of the gate. I'm going to mess with this for a second. I, I tied it like I was tying my shoes. And now I'll just get my fingers in the loops. And if you tie a good bow out of the gate, I would love to see it. Just let me know. Tag me. I'll come watch you. <laughs> I have bow makers for that. I have, a, I have a little contraption I use to make my bows for classes and stuff to make it easy for people. Okay. Unless it goes around the whole card, sometimes I'll, I'll go in and make your bows for you. All right. So here we go. I don't know if I like that either. It looks like a bridesmaid... Uh, Bow, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. The ones on a bridesmaid dress. Uh, here. Sweet. I think Kim was talking about scissors like these earlier. It is, Wink Estella is liquid gold. I agree, Jill, that's a perfect description. All right, here we go. All right, so. It's just about time for me to roll. I just wanted to give you like the real basics. Um, this is not my best card. It's not Picasso for sure, but it does give you um, the start, the beginning, and that is totally crooked and gonna make me crazy. So you know I'm gonna rip this off and go again. <laughs> I might as well do it right now because you know um, I can't even stand that. Oh, you know what we could do? See, happy accents. I told you I wanted to extend it. Let's add a little more glue first because I have been playing with this glue and now it's starting to get like not sticky. 
I have an idea here. Let's extend that bottom one to the outside of the card base. So it's not gonna matter that I cut into the white at all because we're not gonna use it. Okay. So here's that layer and I'm gonna come down and try and stay at the same angle this time. And I wanna push it down like that. Oh, it doesn't fit if I do that. I need another piece. It's a little short. That's probably why I was crooked too. Because I was trying to make it fit and it was just too short. Here. So now I've got like mad amounts of extra. There we go. And now I can flip over and trim. I don't need to contend with two pieces of paper to make me straight, but one really helps. And I'm not cutting into the white because I flipped it over and I can see where the white ends. I like that it's outside the box. What I use to make bows, I use, um, this thing I have a second and I do have them in my store if oh sorry I hit the camera um if you do want one and you've got a class coming your way um I can include it in your box they, they're 12 bucks um so I just use them so basically anytime you make a bow it's a big circle that gets closed in the middle, right? So that's exactly what I just did. And um, we can make you a video for that. That's no problem at all. But that's, that's, the quick, that's the quick answer. And it does come with directions. My friend uh, Lee has these manufactured and I support her. I buy them and I can, that's why I have them in stock. So yeah, no, we don't sell anything like it, but I do love it and it's, an inexpensive way to make a bow and not have it look frumpy. Cool. All right. Well, let's flip the camera again. Whoop. Thanks for joining me today. I'll be back online tomorrow at 11 a.m. for our uh, free online workshop. And I, it's only to celebrate the, um, 800,000. I don't. When uh, Dauber Du was asking if I have a video for the bow maker, I didn't make one specifically, but I typically just make them on the fly because it's a 30 second thing. You just have to be um, at the right angle behind me. So um, I could make a quick one. It wouldn't be a big deal. Um, anyway, tomorrow at 11 a.m. I'll be doing my workshop. And um, if you're not around at 11 a.m. and you work a day job, don't worry. It will be available uh, until Monday. You can get a free packet in the mail with an order. I'm so grateful for all of you. And I wanted to do something special. So it's fun folds and gift card holders. If you spend 35, you get the packet in the mail with the PDF in your inbox. If you spend 65, you also get a whole package of uh, the Jolly Pearls. Um, Tracy, I'm so glad that you watched and that you learned something today. That's my goal. Um, even though we were going back to the beginning, I hope that you picked up a tip here and there if you're, if you're, um, seasoned and, um, yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow and, uh, don't forget stamp up breast cancer is Saturday. If you haven't donated online already, there are 15 different artists that made a card a single card using the, st the same stamp set. And we are sending a total of 20 tutorials out after the event on Saturday to anybody that's long distance. If you donate $25 online, that is also your entry for the in-person uh, version here in Harmony Hall. I'm like, it's over there in Drake it. <laughs> um, it's not too far from me and we have lots of raffles. Stampin' Up! is coming and supporting us. Elizabeth Belleville will be flying in from Utah to join us at the event. And I'm super excited to put a hug on her. I haven't seen her in quite a long time. 
and uh, I think that's everything. So have a great night. I'm going to clear everything off and get ready for club tonight, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.